In this lesson, we're going to discuss the airport plan view. The plan view is actually a two scale de depiction of the airport. In this case, it's a graphical depiction of the airport layout in basically latitude and longitude. You can see these grid lines in degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes. The airport magnetic variation is graphically depicted as well. In this particular case, it's actually six degrees west. There are actually a lot of notes depicted around this chart in Orlando. And we're gonna pull a few of these notes out and I'll show you what they say. Just a few, there's a ton of them. These notes are pertaining to basically a specific area. They're placed within the area or tied to it. And let's take a look at the West Ramp here. The West Ramp Customs Inspection, parking area restricted to aircraft wingspan less than 118 feet. You know, it's very interesting that they put less than 118 feet. Does anybody know why that is? The wingspan of a 737-700 series and an 800 series is 117 feet. Isn't that interesting? As you can see here, these are actually runway designated numbers. And they're actually in magnetic unless there's actually a T next to it, which that indicates true. Let's take a look at something very important. It's actually the physical length of the runway. We have runway in thousands of feet with meters next to it on international airports. Another important feature is the runway end elevation. Everybody goes, well, our runway's flat. No, there's some massive slopes in some of these runways. And you could tell by looking at the elevation on the both approach ends of the runways to see if it's an upslope, downslope. Obviously, it tells you on the chart as well. But it's an interesting at a quick glance if you wanted to see what the end elevation looked like. Sometimes runways have displaced thresholds, which means you actually can't land on that. I don't know if you knew that but you can't land on a displaced threshold. This is what it looks like. We're actually gonna pull the chart from Fort Lauderdale 10-9 page, and we're gonna look at the 10 left approach here. You could see this line across the runway. That's actually indicating a displaced threshold. Again, you cannot land on a displaced threshold. You could take off, but you can't land. Let's talk about lasso. And no, I'm not talking about a cowboy lassoing a cow. I'm talking about a land and hold short restriction. Some airports have lassos in effect and you have to abide by that. And what that really means is that you're clear to land and another aircraft's clear to take off on the opposing runway. If you don't stop in time, there could be a major accident occurring. Okay, so it's important that if your airline, some airlines don't even have lasso restrictions in place, which means they won't let you actually do a lasso. Very interesting story about lassos. There was one in effect I was flying years ago and I ended up accepting a lasso or a land and hold short and I screwed the landing up royally, really bad, porpoise down the runway, couldn't land, I was floating. I finally got it stopped and about 25 to 50 feet in front of us was a wingtip of a Lear 24 passing by the other runway. And this was in, you bet, it was in Nantucket. Very scary time for me, but a really good and interesting lesson about lassos. So anytime you see a lasso and ATC tells you, hey, can you accept a lasso? Know what you're getting into and know your performance on the aircraft. Let's talk about another hot topic. Yes, I made a pun, hot spots. Hot spots are located on charts and they actually depict areas of very confusing spots where you could actually mistaken a taxiway, get on a runway, maybe, things like that. It's, it's really a, an alert for pilots to pay attention and go, these are hot spots, I've gotta be careful and know exactly where I need to go to not penetrate a runway or turn down a different taxiway. If you look at the 10-9 page for Sweden, Stockholm, you can see there's a multitude of hot spots. We have HS1, HS2 and so forth. If you take a look at HS1, it says risk of entering runway when taxiing in runway delta to Yankee. And those are the hot spots that really kind of help. They're, they're actually notes that bring attention to the pilot for awareness or heightened awareness to know, I gotta be careful in these areas. 
Let's talk about a stopway or overrun. They look like this on the chart. Uh, when applicable, these stopways and overruns, they're depicted with this available length. When available, stopways and overruns are depicted with applicable length that's really not applicable in Orlando. There is no stopway or overrun at this airport. All taxiways are filled with gray shading in them. You can see here from the Orlando chart, there's a lot of taxiways at this airport. Taxiways are identified using the alphanumeric code, Alpha Bravo Charlie. Sometimes large airports will actually run out of identifying. That's why they have to combine a alphanumeric letter with a number, Hotel 5, Echo 3, and so on. Okay, let's take a look at what permanently closed taxiways look like. They're actually a bunch of X's. As you can see here on this chart, there's a bunch of X's here. That means that this taxiway is permanently closed. Let's go all the way down under in Australia. Now we're gonna pull up the Brisbane chart here. In this particular case, this is actually a decommissioned runway. And you can see the taxiways with a bunch of X's in them. That means those taxiways are no longer in use. So let's head back to Orlando. Let's check out what these approach lighting looks like on the symbology here. The configuration and length of all known approach light systems are shown. Now this could be the entire lesson on just the runway lighting, but for this lesson, it's outside our scope. We'll cover this in a future episode. All right, so let's talk about seaplanes. One of my favorite things both real world and the simulator love seaplanes. What about seaplanes then in a chart? Well, we're going to show you what it looks like here. Seaplanes can land pretty much anywhere, except if you're actually flying to a seaplane base and they have the designated area to land at. So let's talk about the ARP and I'm talking about airport reference point. This is the actual latitude longitude that was done on the heading section of the chart. That's where they take this from, the ARP. Again, if you're in a jet aircraft and you're programming your FMC, don't take what it says like MCO and then just the latitude longitude. That's the ARP of the airport. As most things happen, change is always a constant, especially at an airport. Pretty much everything is under construction some, at some point. As you can see on this page, there's multiple shaded areas with cross hatching. That really indicates construction. Airports in the United States have actually a rotating beacon to dictate nighttime flying and or IFR. In this particular case, it's all the way on the west side and the symbol is a circle with a star in it. Various buildings are also depicted on the chart. They're really by shaded dark squares, which will show buildings. The actual feet are shown too, just to show you how high these buildings are. In this particular case in Orlando, there's a building that's 179 feet. It's good to know. Let's go to Orcas Island in the Northwest and let's check out what roads look like on charts. As you can see, roads on or near the airport are also shown with a grayed out area. It references in, in a caution, it could reference an alert or a be aware note on the chart. Here is Orcas Island. You can see the roads to the right of the hangars. Let's talk about EMAST, Engineered Material Arresting System. How can we describe EMAS to you that everybody knows? If you've ever rode a bike and you're going down a hill, let's say you're going pretty quick and you hit sand and I'm talking about very thick, soft sand, what happens to you? You guessed it. You go right over the handlebars. It's almost a dead stop. And then you go over the handlebars. Trust me. It's happened to me many times. Maybe that's the why I'm one runway that has really got a lot of airplanes is Burbank runways eight. Very short runway, not a lot to stop on, not a lot of pavement to stop on. So there's a little margin of error. There's actually no margin for error. So if you decide to float at this airport, you don't go around, you're going to be stuck. 
Number 23 is basically wind indicators. Actually, their wind socks or wind indicators will actually be depicted on the chart. And you can see here, it's usually by the ends of the runway. So what about helicopters? Orlando doesn't have any actual helicopter landing areas. A helipad, it's called, is actually depicted by this triangle with an H in it. Another neat feature is actually the placement of a VOR or an NDB. In this particular case in Fort Lauderdale, we're actually going to show you where a VOR is located. Number 26 will dictate the actual power lines on an airport. Now, smaller airports usually have this depiction, larger airports don't. In case of Orlando, power lines next to major high traffic areas are not a good thing. So there really isn't any power lines next to Orlando, probably buried. So let's talk about that high terrain points or man-made structures next to the airport. That will actually be depicted as well, as long as above 50 feet, it'll be shown on the chart with an actual MSL number next to it. If special use airspace is located within the plan view of the chart, it's actually gonna be depicted as well, as you can see here. Hazard beacons are also shown on the chart, depicted with this star. If railroads are actually noted on the chart, there actually will be depictions as well. As you can see here, it's a gray shaded area with kind of cross tracks next to it. If there's a ditch located next to your airport in the plan view area, it will be depicted on the chart as well. Very useful information if you lost an engine or something. Where's the best place to land it? Probably not in a ditch. Open-ended trees dictate an area of forest. Finally, number 34 indicates a bluff. Actually, with arrows, will show which way it's dropping. Again, really good thing to know if you need ground effect or something like that. You lost an engine. Really good idea to show where those bluffs are to help you maintain. Now, I've seen a couple of times where you have an airport next to a river and somebody was taken off and the, the spark plugs are fouling or something like that. You can use that to help you stay in ground effect. And what you can do, let's say you had a ditch that rolled down. When you take off, you can follow that ditch down, stay in ground effect, go over the river, get some airspeed where you can climb out. Now, I don't wanna do that. I've seen it done in emergency situations. So it's really good to know where those low spots are. To sum up what we discussed today, we really discuss the entire plan view. Not only that, but the symbology of that plan view and what it means to pilots. If you don't have our charting services yet, we recommend you going to navigraph.com and checking out our charting services there. Also, become a member of our Discord channel. Yes, we're on Discord, check that out too. My name is Jason from Navigraph and we hope you enjoyed this lesson.